for episode two. So in this episode, we're testing out three of BTR's flagship uh, camshafts. So these are the version two camshafts. Um, we're gonna test out the stage one, stage two, and stage three six liter camshafts, also known as the LS3 version. Um, the reason why I've decided to do the one, two, and three, because I believe these are probably the camshafts more targeted at stock cylinder heads. Um, although I think the stage three is probably not really, it's probably at the end of it, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll save it when we get to the dyno sheet. But, um, so there's the test mule. If you didn't see our episode one, where we pretty much cut the whole front off a of VE Commodore and um, made it so it's usable, you know, so we can actually get in there and do our job. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's go and check out. Um, now, one thing I do need to make note, I got sound clips of stage two and three. We went gun ho on stage one and by the time we got halfway through pulling the cam back out, we realized we didn't get the sound clip of stage one. So you're gonna have to trust me when I say stage one camshaft has an awesome chop. It sounds really, really good. Um, it's got chop, it's got enough to know you've got a camshaft, it's got enough to make it sound angry, um, and it, it really is a, a really nice sounding camshaft, so you've just got to take my word on it, and I do apologise, I did not get a sound clip. But, let's have a look at the dyno graph. So, here we are. So, as we were in the other video, um, so baseline is 295 kilowatts, 536 newton metres of torque, Yes, we are on the hub dyno, so we are going to get higher power figures. So I just don't want to be in this whole course of the series where people are saying they're high figures. It's a hub dyno. We don't have tyre losses. We don't have wheel losses. We don't have any of the inertias or the weights of the wheels and all that sort of stuff and fighting traction on the dyno. That is all ruled out. We are literally bolted to the retarder and what you see is what we get and that's what it is. If you think the figures are too high, I really don't care because all we're really looking at is what our baseline figure is to the figure after it's been modified. So if you can just ignore the actual overalls and look at the differences between them, that's how you know what is legitimately the real deal in Newton meters and kilowatts. Now for our American buddies, I apologize. We are in metric. Um, if it's too hard for you to get onto Google, punch in a few numbers, it can convert it for you. Um, our last series, I've got so many videos of people just going, you know, horsepower is, you know, the only metric in the world. Well, it's not. Um, you know, we use metric over here. You guys use Imperial. I, I apologise. It's just what we talk over here. It's my language. It's what I work in, and that's what it is. So if you want to convert it, Google's your best friend. So, but anyway, let's get to business. Let's talk about the differences and why I would use what and what not. So, as you can see, BTR stage one camshaft is a 217, 230X, 615, 636, 113 lobe separation. That produced 362 kilowatts, 584 newton meters of torque. Where the stage two camshaft is the 221, 230X, 624, 636, 112, that made 370 kilowatts, 591 newton meters of torque. Then the stage three camshaft is a 227, 240X, 236, 236, 111.5, 375, 594 newton meters. Now, all very good figures, like exceptionally good figures, considering this is a stock cylinder head combination. So. We know from previous experience, from cylinder heads, from Blackwells, we generally see 18 to 20 kilowatts more. Now, when we move on to the, to the cylinder head testing, you will see the differences and you know, it will prove what I'm saying. However, the, the differences from stock is what we're looking at. So uh, I guess the big thing between all three of these camshafts, you know, in comparison to the, to the factory combination, you can see from 1400 revs, up to about 3,200 revs, they're, they're, it's, you're splitting hairs, you know, a few kilowatts here and there, and we're looking at around maybe 20 to 25 newton meters tops in the bottom, you know, so they're all very, very similar up to 3,400 revs. However, once they get to 3,600, this is where they all start to move, and the biggest variation between the three camshafts is from about 5,200 revs onwards, and this is where you can see where they are the difference the biggest difference of the lot of them, you know, in newton meters and kilowatts. So, 
Um, the stage one camshaft pretty much tops out at your 362 kilowatts. Um, and that's a really, really good camshaft. But as you can see with the stage two camshaft, it just starts to pull away from 5,000 revs and it makes that extra kilowatts, you know, all the way to around sort of 6,800. And then the stage three doesn't start to sort of lift away into around 5,600 revs and then carries it to the same deal, you know, around that 7,000 revs. And you can see it's sort of a little bit more power. It's not massively more on the same in Newton meters. Um, but I guess the big thing is, is, you know, What's the big difference between the three of them in how they perform in tunability, streetability, and so on? So my personal take is that the Stage 1 camshaft packs a very, very big punch considering it's only a 217, 230, um, you know, 113 lobe set. It's not a big camshaft, but it responds like a big camshaft. We, we only lose a very small amount of kilowatts and newton meters off the bottom, and I'm talking not many people are going to notice that. Um, but, you know, the sudden rush from that 3,000 waves onwards is where it really starts to come to life and as do all the other ones. Um, but I guess the big thing with it is it sounds good. It's got an awesome choppy idle. Like, it really does sound like you've got a good camshaft in there. Um, it's got that racy sound to it. But street manners are amazing. It is absolutely drivable. Um, it's got, I think it was like 58... It was, yeah, it was 58 kPa at idle, which is really, really good. Um, you know, standard stall converter will work exceptionally well uh, with this camshaft. But, you know, letting the clutch off drive away. Um, I actually left all the stock, the stock idle spark and airflow tables and stock idle when I first put it in, and it ran really well. So if you were putting this camshaft in and then taking it to a tuner, um, I would be comfortable you could just start this thing straight up um, you know, bed it all in, get the waters right and everything, and you could just drive it straight to a tune shop, um, and it would actually actually sit there and be reasonably okay. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect, but, you know, it will idle and it will do everything it should do. It's, it's very, very well mannered, um, and, you know, and you can idle at like 550 RPM, but although we found the best idle uh, setting was around 600 RPM, it was very, very happy there. Um, but yeah, like really, really nice cams. So if you've got like a family and this is your only car and you sort of want to have that, you know, the camshaft sound, but you don't want to jeopardize drivability, streetability and all that sort of stuff. And I think the stage one camshaft is a really, really good universal all round cam because when you consider what it's making, you know, 362 kilowatts, you know, it's only like sort of like what, 14 or 15 or whatever it is, you know, kilowatts away from the bigger cams, you know, so that's not that much in the grand scheme of things when you see it. You know, like it's only from like 5,000 revs here and onwards. So, you know, the, the Sage One cam, it, it seriously packs a punch and it is mighty impressive on a six litre. Very happy with it. So, um, but moving into the Stage Two, you know, so it's slightly bigger. It's on the intake, it's gone to a 221. Um, it's still a 230X, a little bit more lift on the intake. Uh, and the lobe separations drop down to around sort of one, one, two. So, um, but you know, that, that, that jumps up substantially. So it goes to 370 kilowatts, 591 Newton meters. And you can see the same thing again. Starts to lift off at around 5,200 revs and carries that little bit more power in the top end. Um, now, camshaft's got an awesome chop. Sounds really, really nice. It's probably another 5% more choppier than the actual stage one. Um, but still very well mannered and you could probably get away with a stock converter in this camshaft although a converter would be recommended um, but you could get away with it if you had to but it is a really nice choppy angry sounding camshaft um, you, your drivability is slightly reduced as opposed to the stage one um, so if you do have a sensitive family or the missus or you know I'm not being biased anyway I'm just sort of just pointing out the obvious things that are in people's heads that you know if, if you've got, you know, any second thoughts of the drivability of it's going to be an issue with your day-to-day -day life, then the Stage 2 cam probably isn't the camshaft to go for. You probably should go to Stage 1 because, you know, you're not making a hell of a lot more power from what it was, um, but you're not sacrificing too much either. So, but, you know, if you don't care about that stuff, then the Stage 2 is awesome. And if you've got a track car and you want that extra bit more power on the top end, well, then the Stage 2 is a winner. Um, now, moving to the Stage 3. So, you know, much bigger camshaft, 227, 240X, you know, more lift again, lobe separation has been dropped and, you know, it picks up another sort of five odd kilowatts um, and a few Newton meters. And you can see here, compared to the stage two, it's marginal at best. 
Um, and, you know, same in the bottom. Doesn't lose as much anyway. But, you know, it's an angry-sounding cam. It sounds angry. It's got, like, 70-odd, you know, KPA, whatever it is. So it's, it's, it's a lot angrier. It's a lot harder to tune. Drivability is absolutely going to be affected. Um, forget about using it with a standard converter. Not going to happen. You need a high stall with this camshaft. Um, and if you've got a family member or someone that you, you want to share the car with and drive it and, you know, they're not into sports cars, then forget about it. They're not going to be able to drive the car. Um, this camshaft is not for somebody who is sensitive in that department. However, if you can make compromise and you don't care about that stuff and you're all about that chop and that angry sound and you don't care about how rough it is and, you know, how crap it drives and so on, well, stage three is for you. Um, however, this camshaft is going to be better suited to cylinder heads. Uh, because as you can see, the gains from stage two are marginal. So the only real benefits you're seeing from this camshaft is a little bit more power, a tiny bit of newton meters, and a hell of a lot more chop. But as an overall, compared to the stage two, not much different in it. Um, so honestly, me, I think the stage two is about as far as you want to go with the stock cylinder heads. Uh, but if you're going to put heads on there and put some compression in it, um, or perhaps maybe a slightly bigger engine, um, the, yes, the camshaft will come into its own. But yeah, probably not a camshaft I will recommend to my day-to-day -day customers, uh, depending on obviously driver, you know, driver will, you know, what you're going to do with the vehicle, you know, how you're going to use it as a daily. Nah, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, as a daily, stage one, absolutely, 10 out of 10, ticks all the boxes and it works well. Stage two, you start to lose a bit of drivability, but you know, you can, you can move on with that. So, but um, hopefully you enjoyed that. It's, it's sort of a bit of a, it's, it's their three, you know, I didn't see the point in doing the stage four. So, but yeah, look, it worked well. The camshafts are all good camshafts. They all have their place. They all have that application and so on. And depending on you, the customer, what it is you are actually looking for, it, that you are the biggest person who dictates what we're going to use, you know. So, but we've got the data now. We know what they do in comparison to the to the baseline run, and you know they are great camshafts. They work well. Um, obviously, you need dual valve springs. You need push rods with these camshafts. Um, we obviously put trunnions straight away into this engine because we just wanted to have the good stuff in it. Um, but you know, Alice's are at that age now. You should be putting trunnions in just about all of them now. So. But um, anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. The next video is going to be of BTR, so their Truck Norris and the Red Hot. You know, I'm gonna, I've, I've saved them two to do together um, because they're their fancy name camshafts. And I thought, you know what, we'll save those. We'll give them their own little segment just on those two camshafts. But I will, com I will bring the comparisons back into these camshafts so you can actually see them on the next video. So, but um, if you've hanged around this far, Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are in the market and you want to purchase all of these items, we have them in stock. They are on our online stores. This isn't a sales pitch, but I am letting you know. Every time you buy these products from our store, you're supporting our business. We are a family business and we are employing all our local staff, you know. So, um, so all the money that we, you know, we, we generate back through the business allows us to continue doing these videos, which in return, you know, give you guys knowledge and save you guys from waste of money on doing pointless, you know, upgrades that you just don't need to do. So, but, um, but yeah, and if I can make a camshaft sale out of it, well, you know, it's a bonus for me and it, and it keeps the wheels rolling on the ship. So, well, you know, on the car, so I should say. Um, but anyway, thanks again and see you on the next one. Bye.